Hi everyone, welcome to the second lecture of the series on sliding mode control. In this lecture, we will discuss the first order sliding mode control with some examples. Here is the overview. We start with the first order sliding mode control with a single input system example. Then we discuss a multi input system example with simulation. In the single input system example, we are considering a mass spring damper system, which is a second order mechanical system. Here we are considering a mass spring damper as given in figure 1, for which we can describe the dynamics using force balance equation as in equation number 1, where m is the mass, b is the friction coefficient of the damper, and k is the spring constant of the spring. Here x is the position and f is the applied force. And we can consider a mass spring system where the friction coefficient b is equal to 0, and we select the mass m equal to 1 and the spring constant k equal to 1 and the force f as the control input, then this dynamics will become as in equation number 2. Now by defining the state variable x1 equal to x and x2 equal to x dot, we can obtain the state equation for this dynamics as in equation number 3. So here we have two state variables x1 and x2 and this is a second order linear system. And we are using this system for illustrating the first order sliding mode control. And we are selecting the sliding variable as the output error, which is yr minus y, where yr is the output reference and y is the actual output. And here we are considering the state variable x1 as the output. We have the derivative of the sliding variable or s dot will be x1 r dot minus x1 dot. So here we are considering x1 r as 0, so x1 r dot will be 0. So this gives s dot as minus x2. And here we can see that the control input is not appearing in s dot. Consequently, we cannot use first order sliding mode control with this sliding variable. Therefore, we modify the sliding variable as in equation number 6, where we include the derivative of the output error as well. This gives the sliding variable as minus of x2 plus cx1, and for which we have the derivative s dot is equal to minus of x2 dot plus cx1 dot, which is equal to x1 minus u minus cx2, which is obtained from substituting the state equation. Here we can observe that the control input u is appearing in the derivative of the sliding variable. Therefore, we can use first order sliding mode control with this sliding variable. And for this sliding variable, we have the sliding surface is defined by s equal to 0, which results in equation number 8. So here we have x1 dot is equal to x2. So the sliding surface is basically x2 plus cx1 equal to 0. This we can rewrite as x2 equal to minus cx1, which defines a line in the state space or in the x1, x2 space. And this line is spanned by the vector 1 minus c. And slope of the line will be equal to minus c. Here we can rewrite this equation as dx1 by dt equal to minus cx1, which is a first order linear differential equation. So the solution of this equation will be as in equation number 9, where we obtain x1 of t as x1 0 in e raised to minus ct. And we have x2 of t will be x1 dot, which can be obtained by taking the derivative of this term. And it gives x2 as minus c x1 0 e raised to minus ct. So these two terms will be converging to 0 exponentially. So we can ensure that x1 and x2 become 0 asymptotically once the sliding variable is equal to 0. So our objective is to make the sliding variable is equal to 0 so that we can have this resultant dynamics. Now, in order to make the sliding variable 0, the condition to be satisfied is as in equation number 10, which basically says that if s is positive, s dot should be negative and vice versa. So, this basically ensures that the sliding variable s will be decreasing in magnitude always and it will eventually converge to 0. And this condition we call as the reachability condition. We obtain the derivative of the sliding variable or s dot as in equation number 11, where we had the term with control input u as well. Now, if we select the control input u as a switching term as here, this will result in s dot as given here. If we select this value of k sufficiently large, or if k is greater than cx2 minus x1, or in other words, if k is the dominant term in this expression, then the sign of s dot will be decided by the switching term. In that case, if s is positive, then minus k sigma of s will be negative, which makes s dot negative, which ensures s into s dot less than 0, and thereby reachability is satisfied. 
for the control input u is equal to minus k signum of s, we have for s greater than 0, u will be equal to minus k. This will give x1 dot as x2 and x2 dot as minus x1 minus k. We have x2 dot is dx2 by dt and x1 dot is dx1 by dt. Now, if you take the ratio of x2 dot by x1 dot, we have this dt times cancel and it gives dx2 by dx1. And for our case, it will be equal to minus x1 minus k by x2. Now, by cross multiplying these terms and rearranging, we can rewrite it like this. And by integrating on both sides of this expression, it gives equation 12. This will be the equation of a circle with the center minus k0 and the radius as root of c1. And similarly, for s less than 0, u is equal to plus k. And proceeding in the same way, we obtain equation 13. And this means that if u is minus k, then the state trajectory follows this circle. And for u is plus k, the state trajectory follows this circle. And for the sliding mode control law, the u will be taking either value of plus k or minus k. This means that the state trajectory will be composed of the arcs of these two circles, center k0 and minus k0. This figure 2 shows the response of the first order SMC for the initial state to 0 and the sampling period is chosen as 0 0.001. Here we can see that both the states x1 and x2 are converging to 0 and the sliding variable is also converging to 0. Here this figure shows the plot of the state trajectory where we can see that in this portion it is following the arc of the circle and it eventually hits the sliding surface and after that it is sliding through the surface towards origin. Here we have the plot of the control input and once the state trajectory hits the sliding surface, the control is switching between plus k and minus k, which is plus 5 and minus 5. Figure 3 shows the response of the first order SMC for the same example with a sampling period t equal to 0 0.05. So here we have increased the sampling period, which means that we update the control input less frequently. Here the sampling period was very small, that's why we were not able to see the oscillation during the sliding phase. However, here the sampling period was large, so we can see that once the state trajectory hits the sliding surface, the control limit is switching between plus 5 and minus 5, and the state trajectory is oscillating around the sliding surface. So this one will be the arc of the first circle, and this will be corresponding to the arc of the second circle. So the state trajectory will be built of these two arcs. And the oscillation of the state variable around its steady state values is called a scattering, which is occurring in both these cases. And in this case, scattering is clearly visible. Earlier, we obtained the reachability condition as k should be greater than cx2 minus x1. So this we can rewrite as x2 should be less than 1 by c into k plus x1. And if this condition is not satisfied when the state trajectory hitting the sliding surface, then sliding does not start. This means that uh, once the state trajectory is hitting the sliding surface, it will again move away from the sliding surface because this condition is not satisfied. To illustrate this idea, we can select the parameter c is equal to 1. And in that case, on the sliding surface, we have x1 equal to minus x2, which gives x2 should be less than k by 2. So here, if k equal to 1, then x2 should be less than 1 by 2. So in the simulation, we have selected the value of k as 5. So in order to ensure sliding, x2 should be less than 2.5 when the state trajectory is hitting the sliding surface. To see this, we can see three situations, where in the first case, the state trajectory starts from this initial state, and when it is hitting the sliding surface, the value of x2 is around minus 4. And in the second case, it is around minus 5, and in the third case, it is around minus 6. In all these cases, this magnitude of x2 are greater than 2.5, so it will not start sliding. Instead of that, it is diverging from the sliding surface and again hits the sliding surface at these three points where we can see that the magnitude of x2 is less than 2.5. Therefore, it will start sliding. The same situation is illustrated in figure 5 as well where we consider the state trajectory starting from the sliding surface itself. In all these situations, the magnitude of x2 is greater than 2.5. Therefore, it will initially diverging from the sliding surface it only hits the sliding surface and starts sliding. However, in the state trajectory 1 or the one with the red color, the magnitude of x2 is less than 2.5. Therefore, the states will start sliding from the initial time instant itself, which can be observed here.
for the mass spring system we had obtained the derivative of the sliding variable as in equation number 17 and here we can observe that the s dot contains the terms with both x1 and x2 this means that the value of the states will affect reachability therefore we can try to modify the control input as in equation number 18 where we included the state terms in the control law and if we substitute this u in this equation these terms will cancel so that gives s dot as minus k sigma of s which results in s into s dot equal to minus k into modus so this reachability is satisfied always so this is one way of modifying the control input in such a way that the reachability can be ensured from all regions in the state space here this figure shows the response of the single input system with the modified control law and this we can see that the states are converging to origin and the sliding variable is also converging to origin and here we can see the plot of the state trajectory and the sliding surface and finally this plot shows the control input here this figure 7 shows the plot of the state trajectory for different initial conditions here we can observe that respective of the initial condition the state trajectory is converging to the sliding surface with the modified smc control law next we consider a multi input system example and here we are considering a third order system with two input as given in equation number 21 for this two inputs we select the sliding variables as s1 and s2 as given in equation 22 and from here we can compute s1 dot and s2 dot by substituting the state equation terms from which we can compute the control inputs u1 and u2 as in equation number 23 now this figure 8 shows the state trajectory of the multi input system with smc control law here we can see that the state is starting from some initial condition and it is converging towards origin here this plot shows the response of the states where we can see that all the three states are converging to origin from the initial values and the sliding variables s1 and s2 are converging to origin the matlab codes for these simulations can be downloaded from the link given in the description that completes this lecture thanks for listening